Hello, my name is Erin Barta. I am a graduate student currently studying organizational psychology at the University of Cincinnati. Today we will be talking about the topic of my research, imposter syndrome. Uh, we'll start with an activity, then define imposter syndrome, discuss what imposter feelings are provoked, and finally we'll cover some tips and tricks to cope with these feelings. The goal of this uh, video is to help you cultivate empathy for yourself and others who are experiencing imposter feelings. So let's start with the activity. What I'm going to do is read five statements related to imposter syndrome. And as I read them, please consider which of the statements characterize your experience. Do your best to keep track of which statements are representative of your experience because we will need them later for the coping skills. So here we go. When I work in groups, I feel like I don't know as much as others. I feel anxiety starting new projects. I feel scared someone will question my qualifications. I sell myself short when talking about my skills and achievements. And I feel like I am not as efficient or productive as others. Now it's time for some reflection. Please pause the video and consider the following questions. What surprised you about these statements? Was there a theme to the statements you related to? Was it a higher, high number of statements? A low number? What do you think this activity was meant to show? So this activity kind of gives you a sense of uh, how you experience imposter situations. Uh, you certainly are not in it alone. I can think of many situations in my life where I have felt all of these feelings myself. Maybe not all at the same time, but definitely in particular instances. So now it's time to define imposter syndrome. Research describes individuals with imposter syndrome as high achieving. Uh, despite their past successes, they fail to internalize their accomplishments. They struggle to attribute performance to their own competence. So they might see successes as caused by luck, timing, or help from others. However, their failures are evidence to their inadequacy, and that's what really, really sticks with them. So now you might be asking, what is an event or situation that might provoke these imposter feelings? Well, I have some examples for you. Um, a colleague, a peer, or even yourself. You might question your expertise. Uh, experiencing success can leave you questioning the legit legitimacy of that success. Comparison among peers can lead you to creating distorted comparisons where you don't accurately compare yourself to someone that's at the same level as you. Uh, productivity towards a goal might leave you questioning your own drive. And although these are just a few examples, the intention is to give you an idea of when imposter feelings flare up. Although there is limited research on ways to mitigate imposter feelings, there is one framework I would like to teach you today. This framework involves recognizing when you're experiencing imposter feelings and creating a statement that reframes the feeling from a different perspective. It is then your job to continue to replace and affirm these feelings with the reframe statement in your daily life. So in the table, you will see that there are three columns. The first is just the imposter syndrome statement. The second is why someone would feel this way. And then the third is reframing of that statement. So let me walk you through the first of the examples. The first column says, I don't deserve this, I was just lucky. So someone might feel this way because they want to discount their personal accomplishments, or they might be comparing themselves to someone else. A good way to reframe this statement is to say something like, my past work and experiences helped me earn this success. I deserve this. So now um, it's time to pause the video again and using the statements from the first activity, please take some time to reframe the statements that you related to the most. In this video, we have defined imposter syndrome, uncovered some ways that you specifically experience it, and given you some tools to cope with these feelings. Now it's time for you to go back out in the world and practice it. But it doesn't stop there. Please continue sharing your experience with others. You never know when your story might validate the experience of another person. And share the things you learned today. Recognize, reframe, replace, and affirm.